Now, let's consider the case where the mass is mounted on a moving uh, base. Call it base excitation. So I have a mass M mounted on a base through a mass and uh, through a spring and a damper, and the base moves in a vertical direction uh, where the distance y, the motion of the mass is x. Now I will have to first derive the equation of motion of this uh, system simply by using, uh, in this case, Newtonian approach, it's very straightforward. Uh, we have the spring force and the damping force. Now in this case, the spring force is K times the difference between the X and Y motion. That's the extension of the spring. So it's X minus Y. And therefore, the damping force is C times X dot minus Y dot. Those are the only two forces on the mass. So now, using the sum of forces equals MA, we have um, negative K times X minus Y minus C X dot minus Y dot equals the mass times the acceleration X dot dot of the mass. Now, I can rearrange this um, so that the X terms are on one side and the Y terms are on the other. CX dot plus KX equals C Y dot plus K Y. So this is my equation of motion. Now, let's say that the base Y is moving in a harmonic manner, harmonic base excitation, so that Y is as a function of time, has some amplitude y, sine, frequency of the base motion, call it omega d, times t. Alright, now I will substitute this into the equation of motion. I will have m x double dot plus cx dot plus kx equals cy dot is c omega d y cosine omega d t that's the derivative of y because it's y dot plus k y sine omega d t. Now I can divide by m to normalize this equation with respect to mass. So I will have x double dot plus 2 zeta omega m x dot plus omega m squared x equals. Now c over m is already established that it's 2 zeta omega m times omega d y cosine omega d t and k divided by m is omega m squared y sine omega d t. So now I have also a differential equation forced down system with harmonic excitation except that we have two harmonic terms now as 
applied excitation force. So what I will do, it, since this is a linear system, I can use the principle of superposition. Solve the problem for the first force in term and get a particular solution. Okay. Uh, use um, for F equals to zeta omega m omega b y I will get a particular solution 1 and solve for another particular solution for omega m squared y and call this x particular 2 and using the principle of superposition the particular solution in total xp will be xp1 plus xp2 the total or the sum of the two solutions that's the principle of superposition for linear systems now let's recall that for harmonic excitation the, when the system was mx dot dot plus cx dot plus kx equals f0 cosine omega t what I did I normalized x dot dot plus 2 zeta omega m x dot plus omega m squared x equals f0 cosine omega t and the response was x equals some amplitude x cosine omega t minus theta where x is f0 divided by the square root of omega m squared minus omega squared all squared plus 2 zeta omega m omega all squared and the angle theta was the inverse tangent of 2 zeta omega omega m divided by omega m squared minus omega squared so let's apply this to my problem here for the particular solution one the f0 term for the particular solution one is right here this is f0 so this is f0 and for the particular solution two is right here over here so that means that um, x particular one is some amplitude x let's call it one um, the function is cosine so it's cosine omega b t minus theta and x one is now all you have to do is replace f zero by its new value here which is 2 zeta omega m omega b divided by the square root of omega m squared minus omega b squared all squared plus 2 zeta omega m omega b all squared and the angle theta is still the inverse tangent inverse of 2 zeta now it's omega base omega m divided by um, omega m squared minus omega squared that would be the first particular solution for the second particular solution it, the phase angle theta is still the same 
because it depends on the denominator. Uh, the numerator, however, is changed to the new f0, which means that x2 is now omega m squared capital Y divided by the same square root omega m squared minus omega b squared whole squared plus 2 zeta omega b omega m whole squared. Okay. Now the complete solution is going to be a sum of the two particular solutions x1 which is x cosine and x2 which is going to be uh, slightly different x particular 2 is going to be x2 but this time it's multiplied by sine so it's sine omega base t minus theta now we'll have to add those two solutions together okay. remember we have cosine here and sine there so I can add them up combine both solutions and one solution in the form of x cosine or um, yeah cosine omega b t minus theta that's the sine and cosine terms now when I add when I combine the sine and cosine terms I will have a another phase angle added which I'll call in this case phi and phi will turn out to be The tangent inverse of omega m squared divided by 2 theta omega m omega b. We have capital Y the same thing. Okay, so it's basically the same process as usual the harmonic excitation the only difference is that the form of the force has changed now we have two harmonic forces applied to the system as a matter of fact all types of excitation on a second order system mass spring damper system with a harmonic excitation base excitation rotating unbalanced they're all the same they all follow this approach, this solution, and these two parameters, except the difference between one case and the other, is just what the F0 term is. That's the difference between the different cases. With the uh, rotating unbalance, it depends on the, um, the centrifugal acceleration, the vertical component of the centrifugal acceleration. And in the base excitation, we have two excitations, so I have to find a solution for each one of those excitations. One solution, xp1, one solution, xp2. Each solution has a phase angle theta based on this, okay, the phase angle. Now, combining the sine and cosine together into one cosine wave will add this extra phase angle. Okay. So, this extra phase angle is coming just from combining the sine and cosine, but the response phase angle is actually theta, right here. 